Hi, it's Karen from Ideal Canals. Good to have you back. You missed it last week, didn't you? Glad to be back. It was good though last week. Got all the takes done in one shot. Cheeky. No, we didn't. Where are we today? We're on the uh, No Locks on the Grand Union Canal. On the Grand Union Canal. So no little village just over here. And we're just a few miles sort of southeast of Solihull, which is kind of that way. And, and there's a boat coming in. And there is. We might be in the way. So I'll tell you what, why don't we open the gate? Shall I open it? Oh, all right then. Go on, get your bum behind that. Oh, Put your back into it. Go remember on. the last time I opened one of these? Yeah, it was about a year ago. That. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? There. You are. Look, doing it one handed. <laughs> Showing off doing it one handed. Mind you, these are um, double locks. They're quite heavy to. Uh, They're wide beams. So They're yeah. big gates. Like the ones on um, the Grand Union Canal further down at Stoke Burn, where we did. Yes, but I had to do that against the wind. Against the wind. It was very windy when we did that. It was like a sail, they just kept opening. Yeah. So canal locks on the Grand Union Canal uh, were renovated to wide beam back in 1930. There used to be six narrow gauge locks down this side here. And we're going to go and take a look at that very shortly. But in 1930, along with Hatton Flight and various other locks along the Grand Union Canal, they were all widened up to these really impressive structures, these really impressive wide beam locks. So I'm going to take a really good look at those today. We've got some whopping big side pans. There's lots to see. Uh, I'll just give Karen a hand with this gate and then we'll be on our Can way. Can help me with this one? I can, once it's moved, I can go on the other side. Oh yeah, no. Don't, right. don't fall off the edge. Yeah, I was just, I was right on the edge. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> There we are. There, hold oh, shut yeah. now. And that will just shut That's when it. the water comes through. Let's go take a look at no locks. Yes. That's Martin aboard his newly picked up today boat called Lorien. He's literally just had it less than a day. Got a bit of work to do. She's seen better days, but I reckon she'll look really cool by the time he's got it all, to, all sorted out. That'll be us in a few years' time, two or three years. Can't wait. <laughs> Before this canal, or this part of the canal, was Grand Union, it was Grand Junction Canal. And before then, this used to be the Birmingham and Warwick Junction Canal. Clearly it went from Birmingham down to Warwick. This is what remains of the head of one of the, or, or I think the, uh, the lower end of one of the old narrow gauge locks. There's not much left. This bit here is now just a spillway for when there's too much water in the canal and you can just about make out the cheeks here on one side where the narrowboats would have nudged their way into the lock. There's not much left. There's maybe a few rope rubbing marks there but not a great deal. As we work our way further down and we, I don't want to fall in, that was close, and we get down to here. As we get down 
towards the next lock, there's a nice, I think what remains of an old lock gate socket. So there's not much left and, uh, and just one side uh, of what remains of third from lockdown. So uh, 51, 50, 49, lock 49 this would have been. And, uh, and this is the, got to be the upper gate socket, hasn't it? And there'll have been another one seven foot just over there. So there's not a great deal left today, which is a shame. Like I said earlier, it's just a spillway for when there's too much water in the canal to allow it to work its way down and not flood over the top of the gates. When they converted these locks from narrow beam to wide beam in 1930, there were six narrow locks and they condensed it down to five and there is now a fall or rise from one end to the other of 44 feet. It was the same fall back in the day when there were six, just less per lock. Anyway, we're going to go down and have a look at some of the new wide beam locks. I say new, they've been there since 1930. So uh, they're, they're not far off on, on 100 years old, are they? And uh, we're going to take a look at those and some more of the narrow beam locks too. So this is the lower end of the third narrow lock down. And you can still see here what would have been the cheeks for guiding a narrow boat in. And everything this way, including where the new wide beam lock is today, would have been pound. This is what remains of the fourth lock down from the top. And of course, like all the others, just one side. That's the gate socket and looks like I think the sluice output. It's a bit high up though, isn't it? Difficult to tell. There's a really good view of the lower ends of both the narrow lock on the right and the wide beam on the left. And certainly judging by the amount of water that's coming over the top of the gates and what remains of the narrow lock, uh, it's really indicative of just how much water we've had in the last two weeks. It has rained almost non-stop. Look, I know I've worked a lot, many and many a lock, but what's this? Well, when they rebuilt these locks, they got all sophisticated and all the older sluices, which you've seen hundreds of. I have. Um, where you've got that toothed shaft that rises up as you yes. crank your handle. Yeah. Well, that's inside here. Ah. Okay, and, and so that you can see that it, it's up, this bit on the top here rises up as well. So you can see from a distance whether it's up or down. Yep. Everything's the same. The gearing inside here is all the same. You put your handle on here and if you want to lock it off, uh, I'm not quite sure that. how this works. I think it goes on there. That go it? Yeah, it goes there. Yeah, and it uh, looks like you might be able to padlock it. I can't tell. Yes, I think these, they padlock these um, at night time because I think these stop Because you get wallies time. coming and letting, opening all the locks and yeah. emptying the canal, don't you? I think these locks, like Hatton locks, uh, stop maybe five, six o'clock, a bit later in the summer. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. There's a very friendly CNRT guy called David. We'll go and ask him. He might know. Hope he's not camera shy. We may have to ask him off camera and report in. We'll see what happens. Right, onwards. So when they built the wide beam locks in 1930. They kept the narrow gauge open so as not stop traffic on the canal. And when they built these, primarily they used concrete and nice strong dark blue engineering brick. A lot of the canal engineers liked engineering brick, but it's expensive. However, it's lasted nigh on a hundred years. And apart from being a bit mucky here and there, there's not a chink in them. The steps are phenomenal. Both sides of the lock entrance, making it really easy for you to get on and off your boat. Good sturdy bollards. What have you found there? I'm sitting on a horse tunnel. I think that's a bit small for a horse tunnel. I could fit in there. Well, you could, I'm not sure a horse could. Shetland Pony, maybe. <laughs> what Karen's actually sitting on is, it's the overspill from the side pans. 
from one pound to another. Just a trickle going through there today. Yeah, There's a horse. A little tricker. I know, you missed it. Never mind. <laughs> so at the head of each lock, there are these little twin side pounds. They're quite badly silted up, to be honest. And then between each lock, there's a much, much bigger pound. Here's how I think the two side pounds work. When a boat comes into a full lock from the top side, there are two side pounds. One is higher than the other. There are two sluices. Each one will discharge water into the corresponding side pound. The higher one will probably take half of the filled lock's water and the lower one will take the other half. Having lowered the water out, the boat discharges from the lock and another boat comes back in. The lower pound returns its water to the lock, or at least most of it, followed by the higher pound. It might not fill the lock completely and some water will be need to be taken from the upper side of the canal to fill it all the way up. But the whole system will save an awful lot of water for every single boat that has to go down. The locks are made almost entirely of concrete and engineering brick and they're very, very impressive looking structures, especially when you see them from above. They are built in such a way that they almost resemble an island with the smaller side pounds off to one side. The lock gates are almost entirely made of wood with steel arms. The gates here are dated from 1997 through to 2020. And even the older gates still look like they've got perhaps a decade worth of lifetime left. That's not bad, is it? They're really solid looking. This one here, three and a half metric tons in weight. Goodness me. And they're made of really solid looking oak built to last. I just caught sight of this fox. So I've zoomed in, it keeps looking up at me. Knows I'm here. It's a good hundred yards away. A little bit of camera shake because of the wind. Clearly searching for something to eat. And the distance that I'm zoomed in. <laughs> Absolutely watching me intently. So as well as otters and badgers and rabbits, I think we can add foxes too, can't we? To the wildlife around the area. Once again, apologies for the little bit of camera shake. He's a long way away and any movement is magnified. Well, well. <laughs> yeah, that's great. This is the bottom narrow lock or what remains of it. And the way over on the, the right here, or the left as you look at it, is the bottom of the new locks. Oh, some rhubarb growing down here. And I'm not quite sure what that is. I'm not much of a horticulturist and I'm, I don't know whether they're weeds or something nicer. Anyway, as you arrive at Knoll Locks by boat at the bottom, it's one of the nicest looking sets of locks around. And although we're still very early spring at this point, there's a bit of colour that's already coming in. And right at the bottom here, at the bottom of the steps, is a nice flower bed. Now we came here last year on foot, not by boat. And this was ablaze with flower. Mind you, having said that, there's a whole load of flowering nettles just here right in the middle. I think somebody might be along one day soon to sort these all out. No locks are a really great example of just how when the Grand Union Canal, Grand Junction Canal took over and revamped and renovated everything of just how to build locks to really last. Some of the gates are mostly wood and some of the gates are largely metal and the metal ones of course 
they outlive the, the wooden ones significantly. This gate here was replaced in 1997 and looks about ready for the next one. So 26, 25 years for a, for a lock gate. That's not bad really. One day soon, maybe about two and a half years away, Karen and I hope to have our own boat. And because of what we're planning for our first cruise, the Grand Union Canal is likely to be about 15 or 16 months into when we start cruising. Because the first thing we're going to do is go all the way around the outside of England, 20 waterways. I think it's 749 miles and about 481 locks. But we plan to raise a million pounds to stand up to cancer. We'd love it if you're following us still then and help us do that. The sun's gone in, hasn't it? It's been, it's been out most of the day. It's been a lovely day today. It's been a beautiful day. A bit windy. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you better be. <laughs> Fig rolls. Mustn't eat them. <laughs> anyway, you never got your coat off, did you? No. I think I got mine off after the intro earlier on. Your That's coat, been nice. Your coat. It's getting a tad, tad chilly now, but it's it not too bad. It is getting cold now. Anyway, no locks. It's been nice, hasn't it? It has. So. I don't think we've spent so much time around five locks in one day, have we really? No. No, been really nice. Some nice people walking up and down, people walking dogs. We yeah. saw a fox. Yeah. Watch, she, or she, I think, you reckon it was a I vixen, think it was a vixen. You? Watching us very intently. Anyway, where are we going next week? We're going to pay poo sticks next week. Poo sticks, where yeah. are we going? Days Lock. Days Lock on the River Thames. We went there nearly a year ago, didn't we? Yeah, about that. You cheated. No, I didn't. You ran a costume this week? Yeah. But I'm not saying what costume because I haven't decided yet. Can I wear my nursery outfit? If you want to. <laughs> I haven't got one, honest. <laughs> right. That's what he tells you. <sighs> it's kind of public. Shh, quiet. So, um, what would we like everybody to do? Subscribe to our channel. Please do that. And would you mind pressing the like button? And until next time, poo sticks away. We'll see you, see you next time. Cheerio. Cheerio.